This meeting is being recorded. Hello, good evening, everyone. Let's wait for uh, the others also join him. Hello. Happy New Year to all. Happy New Year. Lovely to see all of you. If possible, we would request you to switch on your camera uh, so that we can all see each other. It's always good to see bright smiling faces than a black screen. Good evening, Radha. It's a new year, new beginnings, a lot of resolutions. And uh, I think today's session is going to be very, very interesting. Yet another wonderful uh, session from Deha. So really looking forward to it. I, I really like the title of the session, Budget Like a Queen. Right, it, it, it was very nice. The moment I saw that, I felt oh, great, felt really good. <coughs> so, let's wait for uh, one more minute and then we can get it started. I would request Effie to start off with her icebreaker questions. Yes, ma'am. Um, I'll wait maybe for a few more seconds. Yeah. So meanwhile, let's let's talk. How has been the new year? It's already you know twelve days past. So if you girls want, if you girls want to share some interesting things, please please unmute yourself and share. Meanwhile, I think uh, Steffi will uh, take a couple of more minutes to ask her icebreaker questions. So let's let's see let's uh, let's ask this question. So what is one resolution that you took this New Year? Let's get that in the chat box. I'm sure all of us would have. Yeah, I have a question. I have a question. Hi, <laughs> hi, Madhura. Sorry, I missed you. Hey, everyone. Hi. hi. Hello. Good evening, Madhura. You know, I was, I was very intrigued, and on a very lighter note, I wanted to ask this question uh, to the people who have thought of this um, this wonderful session. Okay, uh, which is, uh, you know, a queen i think doesn't need any budgets in her life <laughs> I, I i just i i was just talking on the same lines just you did. Uh, <laughs> you'll have to madra you'll have to stay tuned till the end of the session <laughs> to know more you, thank you. Now, now you got me hooked now you got me hooked okay <laughs> yeah there's a there's a new take which we have on this whole thing so fantastic. let's see fantastic waiting waiting okay <laughs> hey, hello, hello. 
I request all of you to mute yourself so that all of us can enjoy the session. Okay, ma'am. So should we get started? With yes, the yes, Steffi. All yours. Okay, thank you. I, so, I, uh, so Steffi, if I can just borrow a second from you, I have few resolutions uh, that's come up on the chat. So I would love to read that. 15 days, no spends day every month. Wow. Just to control my spending and save more. So Neha, the job is going to be tough for you. <laughs> <laughs> control impulsive buying. Great. Okay. Weight loss. Yes, that, that yeah, too is there. Great no great standard. Yeah. yeah, that's a standard, standard resolution all of us have. No, I think my uh, diary writes this resolution itself. <laughs> yeah. I don't even have to write yeah. it. Auto populate. <laughs> Yes. Multiply yes. money. I like that. Yes. Multiply yes. money. Yes. Lovely. Yes. Okay. Over to you, Steffi. Thank you. Thank you, one and all, for joining us on this wonderful evening. And uh, Steffi will start off with her icebreaker questions. Yes, Steffi. Yes, thank you, ma'am. So I think as per usual, for those who are new here, uh, we have two icebreakers and uh, please feel free to send in your answers to the chat box. Um, without further ado, here's my first question. Um, have you ever prepared a budget? Have you ever prepared a budget for yourself? I'll go first. I haven't. And there's no shame here. We are all just discussing no wrong answers. Okay, no, no. Started this year, great. That is great progress. No, yes. Chilpa seems quite excited about having that. <laughs> yes, okay, no. Yes, in my head is my favorite answer, by the way. No, I haven't since joined family, it's taken care of by my mother-in-law. Okay, no, not for self, did for my organization. Okay, great. Maybe we'll change some things today, right? We'll we'll get into the habit of uh, making a budget for ourselves, for the family, for everything. Um, okay, we have mixed responses. Most people say no. Some people say yes. We'll start this year. Okay, nice. I think people have started 2023 on a very good note, uh, preparing budgets. Okay, great. That is that is a good response. I think we are off to a great start then for the new year. Um, okay, so my next question would be, do you think uh, budgeting should be incorporated as a monthly activity in every house? Yes, yes, it should be great. Yes, most people say yes, things get organized, of course, should be definitely great. I'm very happy, I'm not biased, but I'm very happy to see this, these uh, responses. Definitely, I think most people go with yes. So I think uh, uh, we are doing a good job here. I think we're getting into that mindset um, of money or money management. Um, I think most people say yes, so we will move on. Um, I think with that, we come to the end of our icebreakers. I will now quickly go ahead and launch the poll question. Okay, here's the first poll question. <clears throat> Do you think preparing a budget is required to manage your overall expenditure? Great, we have 90% people saying, yes, it is vital. Some saying it is important, but they're not sure how to go about it. Steffi, can you repeat the question, please? Sure. Do you think uh, preparing a budget is required to manage your overall expenditure? Is the poll question on your screens? Okay, most people go for yes, it is vital. And some say 19% also says it is important, but they're not sure how to go about it. Do not worry, <laughs> we are here to change that. Okay, so I think I will end the poll now and hand it over to ma'am. Okay. 
Okay, ma'am, please go ahead. Neha, all yours. Ma'am, Surely okay. looking forward. Okay. You just called me Neha. <laughs> so, sorry, I was like, who's ma'am? <laughs> oh, my bad. Okay, I'll need uh, screen sharing rights. If you could just enable that, then I'm good to go. Thank you. Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome to such a wonderful topic. I think all those who come to my sessions before, I think uh, I have to admit every topic se pehle I say the same thing. It's such a wonderful topic. I think I just have a love for money. So every topic is so exciting. Um, okay, so let's get started with budgeting like a queen. Okay, so candid confessions uh, for everybody. And this should lay the, I think they should let you all open your heart easily that I did not budget for a very, very long time in my money life. Okay. So after you hear this, please uh, know that at least the last person in this room who's judging whatever you're going to say is me. So I get it. If you don't budget, I heard a lot of people who said, no, we don't budget. And then interestingly, the next question was, do you think you should budget? And then everybody said, yes, 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 we should, right? So I get that and I hear you. So the attempt in the next one hour is uh, to look at this. Uh, okay. Yeah. I'm going to just try my level best to give you a perspective which actually helped me uh, start this journey of budgeting, the impact that it had for me. So everything that I'm going to share in the next one hour is a concept plus something which I've practically experienced with some, ex some examples from my life. And as usual, we're going to have lots of conversation. I'd love for you to be on the chat box actively for the next hour with me. Okay, so no sleeping. All right, for all those who are joining in for the first time, who am I? What is Womanista? My name is Neha Singh. I'm the founder of a platform called Womanista. Um, for those who... Uh, you know, are confused with the name. Let me just spell this out clearly for you. It's woman, money, sisterhood. So W-O, money and stuff. That's it. It's so simple. We launched this with the intention to empower women through financial literacy and create a community of financially smart women. Very, very happy to be aligned with She Knows Money, uh, which is doing exactly the same thing. So it's my pleasure to come in every fortnight and have a chat with all of you around a subject which I love. Um, Till now, over the last two years, we've managed to have some accomplishments, been featured at multiple places, more importantly, impacted more than 8,000 plus women and still counting. Our focus has been personal finance courses. And early last year, we also launched a one-on-one -on -one financial consultation service exclusively for women, where we create customized financial plans and help women achieve their financial goals. For all of you in the room who've come with a baggage, uh, carrying this baggage, I say this in every session. If you have a feeling because I come from a non-finance background, I did not study commerce, I am very bad with numbers, and hence, you know, I cannot manage my money, please drop that baggage right now. The next one hour, I don't want you to come with that barrier. Okay, so anyone in the room out of the 43 people here today, if you're carrying that baggage, please write right in the chat box, drop. I want you to drop that feeling that because I hate math, I cannot manage money. Because it's too complicated, I'm not, I cannot manage my money, right? So let's go. Let's have those barriers out there quitted before you get started. And interestingly, over the last two years, 85% women who've engaged with us again and again have actually been able to take action and become first-time investors. So welcome everyone. And I hope this session, uh, the first session uh, for 2023 is um, interesting enough to keep you hooked to keep coming back for more sessions by Womanista. Let's get started on this topic called budgeting. Okay. Before I take off, I want you all, if you're savvy, you can scan this QR code or I'm gonna share a link in the chat box and I want you to put down one word that comes to your mind instinctively when you hear the word budget, okay? And we're going to create an awesome word cloud, okay? So give me a second. I'm sharing the link. Stay with me. And we're going to uh, have some fun here, okay? I'm sharing the link with all of you in the chat box. And let's go crazy. 
Awesome. Can everybody access that link? So on your screen, you should be able to see something like this. If it's from the phone, if it's from the laptop, I want you all to be able to see this and fill this out and we can see it together. Okay, wait. I'm gonna switch it to a live share mode. All right. All right, can you all see this? Can you all see this? Okay, these are all the words that we feel when we hear the word budget. What are the words? Limits, I love it. I used to feel exactly difficult. Save, spend less, restriction, beautiful. Money management, mandatory, go on. Hard, scary, frustration. I'm waiting for some words like, Nobody wrote anxiety, it's, it gives me anxiety. What is India? Okay, India ka budget, important, okay. What else are we seeing? Discipline, is everybody typing it out? Time consuming, good one. Hard. So, you know, when I used to think of the word budget, and let me be very, very honest here, I used to think it is restricting, it used to give me a sense of anxiety. I used to wonder, you know, what, what am I going to see when I actually write down all those expenses, which right now I'm doing and I'm enjoying my life. I don't want to see it, right? I had that feeling when I used to think of the word budget. So while I've always earned since the age of 21, um, this word was had a very negative connotation in my life. Anyone else who feels similarly that the feeling when you hear the word, word budget is, Generally, a little negative. If, if you resonate with me, put that in the chat box. Yes, Neha, I think it gives me a little bit of a negative feeling, right? Maybe that's why I'm not getting to it. I'm going to watch your uh, responses in the chat box. Yes, Divya, it's mandatory and hard. Yeah. So the idea of doing this word cloud was just to showcase to all of us that budget tends to have this limit, hard, negative-ish connotation in our life, right? And that's probably one of the reasons why most of us think it's a great thing to do, while most of us want our kids to know about having, you know, learning how to manage budgets, while most of us know principally it's the right thing to do, but we don't get down to doing it, right? So I thought, why not share with you what helped me? in rebooting and how I got into the practice of doing this. So we talked about budgeting like a queen. I think a, a, the sense that I can, I have to limit my expenses, maybe that's not what something a queen does, but a queen definitely does something which is called conscious or mindful spending, right? So let's reboot the idea that a budget is about restricting my life. If I just reboot that and I say, this is about moving to a more conscious and mindful way of spending and engaging with money. Do you like that? Thumbs up. Does that suddenly start feeling better, lighter, easier? So just the way any sort of transformation starts with us. So if you want to make a health transformation, the first thing you're going to do is figure out what your current weight is, right? You've got to look at the mirror. Similarly, Budgeting is a mirror which is going to show us what exactly is our money relationship. Okay, So I'm literally widening the scope out here and saying, listen, I know you know budget has spends, it has a way of saving, etc. But how about looking at this as you know, a, a place where I can see what exactly is my relationship with money like? What are the things I'm actually spending on? Are these the things that actually give, give me happiness? Are these the things which are actually going to add to my goals or the life that I want to build? If we start giving it that perspective, suddenly this awareness becomes the first step to making a transformation. 
right? And this exactly is the process which happened with me. So the first time I started reading about budgeting and I was like, no, 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 this is not for me. This is so restricting. You know, I came across a wonderful book and I've shared this earlier. It's called Your Money or Your Life. And you can pick this up. And that, mon that book beautifully relates, you know, um, this concept of having money and happiness. So what do you guys think? Having more money means having more happiness? Tell me in the chat box. What do you think? Kaash mere paas aur paisa hota, to main sab kuch hi kharid leti. Sara mall. Sara mall kharid leti. Okay. Now, what are your thoughts on this? And I want you all to give this some thought. Depends on how you use it. Absolutely. Not happiness. No, no, definitely not. So money can buy you happiness. No, don't agree. It could be a source of happiness. It is not the only source though. Beautiful. Not really. Okay. Using money wisely can bring happiness. And I agree with that, right? So I would say, in fact, spending money wisely or spending money consciously can actually lead to happiness. Okay. But having more money, and I came across something which is called the fulfillment curve. You all have heard of the Maslow's need hierarchy? You have heard of it? I mean, you've got to be really sleeping in class if you didn't hear of this one. It's just been there. Mr. Maslow has been around forever. Yeah. <laughs> I would rather cry and ask him rather than Amarati. For sure. Um, so my voice is echoing for some reason. I don't know. Maybe we can put everyone else on mute. So. so I came across this very interesting concept, which is called the fulfillment curve. Okay, just like the Maslow's need hierarchy explains um, how our needs progress over life. This concept says that after a while, the more money you're spending, the incremental sense of happiness or fulfillment starts diminishing. Heard of diminishing utility? It's exactly that. So your first bite of Golgappa or first bite of that Gulab Jamun or first time that you have, um, you know, walk into a beautiful mall, the first time of anything will make you feel really, really delighted, right? The sense of happiness is super high. But after you've gotten your survival, you've got your comforts, you've got that little luxury, right? So the Aston Martin, you made it, right? And then what happens? The overconsumption doesn't really add up. Okay. So it asks this beautiful question that what is your enough? And that's the question which actually triggered this thought in me that, you know, you reach a point where you're spending and you're just spending and you're just mindlessly spending. And uh, you start asking yourself, hey, what, what's my enough? I have five pairs of jeans. What's, what's my enough? How much am I going to keep buying of stuff and um, where do I draw the line, right? So for me, personally, coming across this concept of having enough, a mindful spending plan became a starting point of identifying what's my enough, okay? What is going to be that comfort that I'm looking for? What is going to be that little luxury that I'm going to go after? Because life is uh, not about constantly running after making money, right? There is a point at which you want fulfillment. So do you agree or don't agree? Tell me, have you heard of this fulfillment curve? Did you like this concept? Yes or no in the chat box. No. Interesting, different take on, my, on, on budgeting. Did you ever think that I'm gonna start budgeting like this? So this, what, this is what happened ladies. And this is why I consciously actually put pen to paper and said, hey, listen, I'm gonna make my budget, okay? And it's a practice I've been doing for many, many years now. And I do it rigorously monthly and without feeling any sort of stress anymore. Because now this is about, um, you know, how you feel when you, when somebody says you have to diet, anybody feels that? Like when somebody tells me now I have to diet, as soon as somebody says diet, I feel like the sense of restriction. But as soon as somebody says, no, no, let's eat mindfully. Somehow I feel, yeah, I can eat things I really like and I can get rid of things I don't really want to eat till the time I'm conscious. It's exactly that which happens in your mind, right? So this is the shift that I want you all to work towards. And if you want, don't call it a budget, start call it, calling it a mindful spending plan. Do whatever it takes to make you feel happier. Now, once you've come around to getting 
you know, to telling yourself, listen, this year I'm going to make a mindful spending plan. I'm going to be mindful about how I am using my money. Then comes the next step, which is how do you actually design something which is a smart budget? I read one of you said, I have a budget in my head, right? That's a very typical thing to do. When me, many times when I ask women, um, do you budget? And they say, yes. And a lot of them will say, mota, mota. It's there in my head, mota, mota. I know it, right? Anyone else in the room who has this mota, mota concept? It's there in my head broadly. I know how to do this. Anyone else who feels that way? Drop a yes in the chat box that, yeah, I look at my budgets like that. Today, I'm going to share with you a simple structure which can help you understand how to create a smart budget. And we're also going to work on a little womanista template, which you can download um, from the website. I'm going to show you how that works. So a components of a smart budget, there are four parts to it. The first part is your income, anything which is in hand after tax inflow. This could be your income if you're doing a budget for your family. It could be you and a partner, whoever. So do it um, collectively or individually, however you want. Easiest part. After that, instead of doing mota mota, we've broken it down into two segments, which is fixed and variable expenses. Fixed expenses are all those expenses which have to be paid irrespective of my income. I have to take care of this. So this could be something like my child's education. You know, if you don't have an income, you're not going to stop paying that. This could be your groceries. This could be your rent. This could be your utilities, like your electricity bill. Um, quick question. For how many of you do you think your Netflix subscription is your need? Put it in the chat box. What do you think of Netflix subscriptions? Need? Want? No? Want? So no one in the room who really enjoys watching Netflix or whatever it is that you watch? One subscription is a need? Luxury? No need, no want? Awesome. So, so what the point I'm trying to make is that for one person, it could be a need and for another person, it could be a want. And there is no defined rule to this, by the way. Okay. You do not have to feel like I want a Netflix subscription. So that is, an, that is not a need for me. Maybe it is a need for you if that's something that really relaxes you. Right. So exactly. So if I don't watch it, I don't enjoy it. No need. The second part or the second section of your budget are your variable expenses. Now, what are variable expenses? So in case tomorrow I don't have a, you know, a regular inflow or a lower inflow, what are those expenses which I can cut down or minimize? Uh -huh. uh, all of that becomes your wants. So stuff like in my world, stuff like gifting is a variable expense. Um, shopping is a variable expense for me. Um, if I have to you know, indulge myself in some extra grooming, that becomes a variable expense. So list down whatever you think would be one or two of your variable expenses. Tell me in the chat box, what do you think is a variable expense or a want for you? Um, let's hear it. Let's admit it to ourselves. Shopping, dining out. Yes, dining out could be a variable expense for us. Taking a holiday. For some people now, um, I know a lot of women who say travel is something that is super important for them. While for some people, um, travel is not a big deal. So you make the decision. Jewelry, interesting. Clothes, shopping, events like birthdays. Like gifting for me is a very big variable expense. I don't think of it as something I need to do um, as such. Eating out, ordering in, lending money to friends, impulsive shopping, right? And finally, the fourth section is whatever is left, you have your savings section, which gives you what amount you have to um, plan for your future self, right? How does one plan this? While there are many budgeting systems, one of the most popular ones and most talked about ones and fairly simple to implement is a 50, 30, 20 budgeting system. All it says is that whatever is your in-hand income, divide it into three categories, your needs, wants, and savings, the categories we just spoke about. How can I divide it? 50% of this money goes towards your needs. 20% of this money goes towards your wants. 30% of this money goes towards your savings. 
Okay. So you can simply, if you have a one lakh of an income, you can do the bifurcation. 50,000 of that is going to go towards needs. So you're going to measure that. Are you over that or less than that? You're going to look at 20,000 going towards your wants and 30,000 savings. Now, hear me out. The original principle says 20% savings and 30% wants. This is my take on this. Okay. Where I'm saying, okay, I'm going to over, I'm going to push you guys to do more savings. But feel free to do it the other way around, right? Feel free if you feel that you cannot do 30% uh, savings, you can start with an ideal of 20% uh, savings rate. You cannot do 20% savings. I would say just put a number to it, commit to a practice and start by saving that small amount. Doesn't matter, okay? These systems are directional. They are done with the intention of giving you a starting point, but it doesn't mean that this is the only system that will work for you, right? I want to share a simple budgeting template, which we have curated. You can go and download this template from the Womanista website. Um, I'm going, just gonna show you where you can find this. Give me a second and then we'll move forward. So on the Womanista website, we have a tab called free resources. We've put down lots and lots of resources here. Here you'll see something called a budgeting tracker. You can download this. You'll fill in some details. You'll get this budgeting tracker and you can just keep it handy for you in case you don't have any other place that you want to start. Personally, for me, working with an Excel works best. Um, I do now after having worked with my Excel you know, uh, for many, many years. Now I do use certain apps uh, as well. But I would still suggest that get started with a simple Excel sheet. It's the easiest way that you can start managing your finances on your own. So I'm going to share what this tracker looks like and we're going to run through this together once. Right. So when you'll download it, the attempt is to give you as many categories as possible so that you all have to not really come up and think of those categories on your own. It's broken down into the sections which I explained. It has an income section, whatever is your salary in hand, you can feed that here. If you go down, you will see various categories parked in the needs or the necessities section, as well as some wants, okay? So, well, we've given you scope. You want to move around some stuff and say, hey, listen, this is my need. This is my want. You want to adjust this. Feel free to do that. This is a practice that you can follow um, in the first week of every month or the last week of every month. You can start planning for the next month and you can start tracking in the last week of the next month. How did you do? Right. So you sit down, you write down whatever are your expense in expected income. What is your expected outflow? So if I was to plan this out, I would say, okay, so if I have to pay a rent of 20,000, I just start feeding all the things that I think I need to plan for. Few things here. Interestingly, if say you're paying some premiums, which are paid annually, you can divide it by 12 and just park it here to have a feel that how it'll look if you were to plan for it every month. And on this right side, once you've done this, it will give you a split of your current needs, wants, and savings based on your total expenses and savings. So everything will show up here. You can feed in any monthly investments you're making. You can feed them here. So it will show up. That this is your total expenses and saving. What is the ideal basis your income? As per the 50, 30, 20, that also shows up here. So if 50% for needs, so I would ideally be able to spend 25,000, but I can see that I'm spending way a lot on my needs. This is where you can go back, find some why, you know, why is this happening? What are the areas that I need to work on uh, across these categories? The biggest difference that this activity made for me is that it started making me recognize what categories were just not um, aligned with my larger goals, right? For example, um, an example which I do use often is that uh, one of my goals, like someone else in the room said, is to be healthier, fitter. 
And when I looked at the first time I did this exercise and I started looking at the amount of money I'm spending on my eating out and my ordering in, um, I quickly realized that this is not absolutely in alignment with what I want for my life. So you can do these little tweaks only if you have this split, you know, up front for you. If you just try to do mota mota hisab, that mota mota I spend this and mota mota I spend that, you will never be able to find or figure out what are those things which are not working for you. What are the things where you feel that guilt when you spend the money? So if you want to move to a mindfulness activity, this is a sheet or this is a way which can bring you largest amount of awareness. Tell me what you think. Do you think something like this would work for you? Yes, no, maybe something else. What do you think? You like it? How can I edit my budget tracker? Just download this. Yeah, I'm going to send the link, right? So I want you all to just do one, just a simple practice, which I would suggest. Try doing this activity just for three months, okay? Just three months is all, for all those who said in the beginning that no, we don't budget, uh, Steffi included. Um, I want you to just try this activity for three months. Okay, and I'm going to tell you some little hacks of how you could um, practice this. So we will send you the link as well. Otherwise, uh, right at the end, I'll show you once again where you can go and download this tracker for your usage. All right. So we did the 50, 30, 20 principle. We have talked about mindful spending. Let's talk about a few questions with which you might have. So here are some common questions that I've come across. Okay, and, and tell me if there's anyone in the room who can connect with this. How do I budget, Neha? You know, this looks so ideal and great, but I don't have a fixed source of income. Okay, basically you're like me. Okay, You're figuring this out. You've got erratic income, your income varies. What do you do? How do I budget? Okay, so here is a simple hack which you can use, something which I also use. Assume the average income of your last 12 months. Okay. If you've been getting an income for the last six months, take six months as a starting point. If you've been getting income for one quarter, take one quarter as a starting point. Doesn't matter. Remove anything which came as a one-time benefit. So at one time you got this big gift from someone or you got this big order, uh, which was um, you know out of the ordinary. I would say either remove it or bring it down to a, you know, more realistic number and start with your assumption around that. This is especially useful for freelancers or, you know, business owners who are still building a stable sense of income. So it doesn't mean you don't budget, you just budget in a little bit of a, um, using some approximations. Second question, how many of you have this question in the room? What if I can't stick to a budget? Anyone here who, who feels that I've tried this many times, boss, ye to hota hi hai kabhi. Ankita, Jinsi, what if I can't stick to a budget? It always happens. Agree, it happens all the time. Nothing wrong with it. It's almost like you have your, I'm going to lose weight as like the annual resolution, right? There could be an emergency. Absolutely. So there's always an emergency. And for that, we have talked about the emergency fund. So we park that aside that you already have. I'm working with the assumption that you've already built your emergency fund. If you haven't gone through that session, we did it uh, last year. So you can go and check out that recording as well. Um, but this is a very simple answer, okay? So I'm going to tell you a principle where I want you all to start reviewing your budgets. And I'm going to really ask you to honestly reflect whether this is an income problem or a spending problem, okay? So typically, if we are not sticking to our budgets, Either we have not anticipated um, all our spends in advance and we can realize that, hey, listen, maybe I'm just earning to less, okay? So um, once you've identified that, I don't have the answer for that in this session, but I will tell you that you need to start bringing in more money. Okay, you need to figure out how you're going to earn more. If you have identified that spending side is 100% sorted, it's an income problem. Typically, I find that this is generally a spending problem, okay? What happens is when we're budgeting, we're very optimistic. So we will, you know, it's just the way a lot of times when women come and talk to me, 
and when they'll say you know i want to buy myself an iphone i know it's an indulgence but you know but you know so you know what happens is when we're writing something to ourselves also we want to be right okay we don't we tend to not be honest so i would suggest since it's an activity you do with yourself just be very very open and honest so if for example you really do enjoy going out and watching movies and that's something you want to put in your budget please put it in your budget there is don't be shy from you know enjoying something that you really do enjoy be guilt free about it and put it in your budget so i've also noticed that sometimes we underestimate you know things that we enjoy and we don't budget for them adequately um so that could be one of the things that you want to go and check right when you're looking at why you're not sticking to the budget and finally let me be very candid it's perfectly okay if you're not you know able to you will not match it be flexible be open but it doesn't mean that you don't do this activity again because simply because remember mindful spending awareness as soon as i'm doing this activity month after month it's going to compound i'm going to become more aware of where i'm going to spend my money and it's going to automatically start happening the allocation right so it's okay if you make mistakes it's human i do it all the time um, doesn't mean it's like you know but jab bachcha acche marks nahi lata hai any any mothers here and if you're okay with hindi if your kid doesn't score well you don't stop loving your kid na you're like ha theek hai try again mehnat karo padho agli baar acche marks aayenge it's the same thing it's just something you do because it's good for you and it's going to lead to results sooner than later so don't drop it just identify if it's a income or a spending problem all right how to adjust for any annual spends okay so i did give one point where i said for your insurance premiums etc you can divide it by 12 and then allocate it so that at the end of suddenly you don't have to pay this huge amount and you're like where am i going to get this 1 lakh of premium from right the other thing you know which i would recommend beginning of the year great time i have recognized that many of us our budgeting also goes hey why you know why because suddenly suddenly to nahi hai but suddenly uh birthday aa gaya my husband's birthday suddenly our anniversary has popped up this month suddenly my best friend's anniversary has popped up suddenly diwali has also come right now the thing is none of this is happening suddenly we all know today only that all this is going to happen yes or no you all know na when your husband's birthday is there you will spend some money money extra your kids birthday is there you will spend diwali is there you will spend you know na you all know at least i know i know also now how much i spend have you planned for this it's first week of january do you all know every month how much you'll have to keep aside to spend for that no many times you miss out many times suddenly diwali has shown up now suddenly something so all of this is not sudden okay we all know this is going to happen so for the such expenses i suggest creating a sinking fund okay so what is a sinking fund a sinking fund means i am going to save small amounts every month for a pre decided amount in the future or a pre decided spend in the future that's what it means simple words my daughter's birthday is on 1st of august okay and i know every year i have to spend x amount of money on a birthday now instead of me panicking on 25th of july that oh god next month i'm going to go broke i have created a sinking fund for her birthday party yes find this funny but yeah i do right um i just divided the amount i'm going to spend and i have 7 months to go and i'm going to save up every month that little bit amount so that by the time i hit july i'm not panicking i'm just going to be like i'm going to use my sinking fund for this right absolutely so icici has something called your iwish account you can look at that it's nothing but a recurring deposit that you can make related to your smaller goals um hdfc also has a passion account something like that again linked to this process or you can just do this simply on your own you can just make a rd which is in the you know linked to that particular spend and you can keep planning for it same with diwali right so tell me thumbs up you like this idea are you going to implement this this month because i know all of us have these expenses thumbs up thumbs down Okay, don't give me the thumbs down. Just give me a thumbs up. If you like the idea, plus one. Great idea. We're gonna do this. 
in January itself. Yeah. Awesome. Plus infinity. I like it. All right. So before I wrap with the next one or two slides, I wanted to share a few hacks which have helped uh, me also. And I would suggest that you also try these to go towards mindful spending. The first hack is to always have two bank accounts. Okay. Uh, for all those who have a regular income, um, it could be one account, could be whatever is your salary account or where you're having your income could become your spending, what I call as my kharcha account. Okay, from here, I manage my budget for the month and all my spends happen there. And the other account is my savings, which I call my freedom fund, right? Where I put every month, um, I put some money for myself, which is going to be my savings account. This is the simplest hack in the book, easiest to implement. If you have still not done this, I would suggest use January as the month that you're going to bifurcate your money into a savings and a spending account and give them that name. Okay, please give them that respect that this is my kharcha account and this is my freedom fund. Okay, first hack. Second hack, automate. Please don't rely on yourself. You can today in a world, you can automate your savings, you can automate your investments, you can automate your bill payments. So I would suggest as far as possible, bring in as much automation. What a simple thing which I used to do when I had a salary account is that um, on the first, my salary would hit. And on the second, I had already automated X percent going into my own freedom fund. I had automated my rental payments. I had automated a few other utility bill payments, um, which I knew, which I have to do. And uh, life was good. My investments were automated. So it's so simple that you can just start automating and managing this easily and do all these automations in the first week of the month, right? So that you're not that person that, hey, Bhagwan, last week of the month, I'm left with nothing. Okay, the next two points I've talked about sufficiently. When you do your three months of tracking, I want you to actively, aggressively cut down on any spends that you do not care for, okay? This helps us become absolutely guilt-free when we spend. For example, today, when I have to say no to somebody um, for ABC thing, which I don't care for, I don't feel guilty at all, okay? I'm absolutely comfortable saying, listen, I'm not gonna spend money on this and that there is no shame in it for me and indulge on what you love research suggests going after experiences creates lasting happiness as compared to material things anyone agrees in this room spending on experiences over a period of time is shown to give you higher level of happiness than spending on material things which give you immediate gratification yes no maybe agree disagree Experience versus material things. Yeah. So this is something. No spending on material at all in my case. Yeah. So for example, um, one of the things which, you know, I can share again, something from my experience that I actively started doing when I, I you know, I spend more time thinking about it is that when I want to, um, so one of my goals has been to build like a deeper connection with my daughter. I, I mean, like better relationship, et cetera, et cetera. So when I started doing my budgets, I recognized that many times, you know, I was indulging in getting her things, right? And all I started doing is replace that things budget with let's do something together budget. Um, so for example, if I was to go and do a class with her, or for example, if I would take her to a place like go out to um, for a day outing together, both of us and spend similar amount of money, I started actively trading that you know, the experience what, instead of buying her things. So Ankita asked an example, the top of my head, something which I've done. Um, so I'm just sharing that. But I think we all can try to do this. And interestingly, one of the things, again, a thing which I read, experience is that a lot of people, you know, it's called the Big Ben phenomena. Uh, I read it in a book. And what it means is that a lot of us who stay in a particular city, so people who are staying in London, um, when they were surveyed, they said they themselves have never visited like a Big Ben. So what we tend to do is the cities we live in, uh, we don't think too much about going and spending times on those touristy spots or those nice, beautiful places, which everybody's talking about. 
uh, which itself could be a great experience and not a very expensive experience at all, right? So, um, which I agree. Maybe I spend less time going to Kutub Minar than maybe a tourist who comes and sees it. But uh, point I'm making is that if you look around, you will find a lot more of these cheaper, um, lower cost experiences, which could be adding more happiness to you than uh, going and just buying new things, right? And another hack, which I really liked is make it a treat, okay? So when something is available to us easily, we talked about this, the impact diminishes. So for example, if you're someone who enjoys chocolates, okay, treat yourself to that gradually and slowly. Don't go after it like I'm going to just spend all my money this, this month and go crazy. Break it into components and enjoy it gradually. So if you're someone who wants to indulge in um, taking a spa, make sure that you don't do it like as a regular practice. Do it once in a while, connect it with a special occasion and make it a treat for you. So the same spend every time it starts giving you that extra happiness. Okay. So I, I thought this was also a very interesting hack, um, which I'm personally yet to use. Um, but I feel that it would be such a useful thing to do to just spread it out over the year and making it a treat for ourselves. So I, um, I love these hacks. If you have any more mindful spending hacks, please do feel free to share them with me as well. I'm always looking out for uh, more ways uh, to add to my mindful spending. One simple proposed action plan before we open the floor for questions is that get into the practice of having a monthly money date. Okay. Now, when we're younger, what is a date for us? Date. So what do you think when I say the word date? Just remove the money part of it. But what, what feelings do you have when I uh, say the word date? Fun. Yeah, I like that. Happiness. New experience. Excitement. Relaxation. Connection. Lovely. Not experienced. Hmm. I can make you experience a money date at least. Sunday. <laughs> okay. I see the humor in that. Okay. Periods. Okay. So generally, okay, I, I, it'll be a combination of a lot of these words. Generally, um, you know, the feeling when you have, okay, I'm going on a date would be around some amount of fun, connection, something adventurous, something joyful right? Date is equal to unwanted headache. Uh, okay. Um, I'm talking about a happy kind of a date, like maybe a date with my girlfriends, my date, a date with my daughter. It could be like just a fun experience of connecting with someone. So take that concept and instead of making budgeting like a chore, Replace it with having a money date with yourself, which means this is going to be my relaxed time. Put on some good music, sit in a place in your house, which you love, like a comfy corner um, and engage and build a relationship with your money. Instead of thinking of this as maths and calculation, I want you to take this time to sit down, reflect on your money spends for the last month Okay. And some of the questions that you can go over when you're looking at your budget. So I've given you a budgeting sheet. You can work on that at the end of every month and you can review with some questions like, did I pay myself first this month? Was I the first person to get a salary, right? You get salary, but you actually pay everybody and forget yourself. Your savings are the last thing that you think of. What spends did I do this month, which added to my happiness? or which got me closer to the kind of person I want to be. What spends can I edit or redirect? Like the example I gave you that, you know, I'm spending a lot of money on eating out. So if I can redirect that money and get myself yoga classes, I'm going to feel better. So I can still eat out, but I have some money going to my yoga classes as well. Am I getting closer to my goals? So am I adequately saving the amount that I want to save? Am I feeling better through my spending pattern, through my mindful spending, that I'm doing things which I actually enjoy and love. And this conversation should be a super relaxed conversation. By the way, you can do this with a partner as well, if you want to. Um, 
have a relationship where you are openly talking about money. This can be something that you all do together as uh, partners in a happy space. And this would be my one um, suggestion or a proposed action that I would want you to take in January um, to get started with a much healthy money relationship. With that, we are going to come to the end of today's session. I'm open to taking questions. Um, book recommendation for all of you. If you haven't, there's so many books around budgeting. I would have, I, I was, I would have put a long list, but uh, one at a time. There's a beautiful book by this gentleman called Ken Honda, um, called Happy Money. Okay. So he talks about the concept of happy or unhappy money. And so interestingly, money EQ and money IQ. A lot of us spend time on money IQ. I need to get the knowledge, et cetera. We don't spend enough time on behavior. So he's going to give you a little uh, view on that. He has a section where he talks about eight money personality types. It's a very interesting book. You can pick, uh, pick this up on Amazon or you can just download a PDF um, online. And in case you want to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation, you can scan this code, book a one-on-one -on -one consultation with us, um, and we can help you with wherever you are on your money journey. Happy to take any questions as well as feedback. Did you enjoy this session? It was a little different from the regular investment stuff that we talk about. So go for it. Money day do you like? Me too. I love it, Asha. No questions? Let's see. Irrespective of income variability, could you give a bare minimum saving every month? So Divya, like I said, um, you know, so let me throw this stat at you. The idea, the average saving rate in India is 20%. Okay. So maybe you can start by looking at it in that perspective that are you able to save 20% of your income? So I wouldn't have a number for it, right? But you can do the math, 20% of whatever you're making, just multiply it. That could be, a, you know, a starting point if you've not even started. Thank you so much, Maria. I'm glad that the envelope method, uh, I didn't talk about it today, but uh, yeah. Yes, arigato, absolutely. Asha, it was a session on budgeting. So when we do investments, trust me, I will take you through an investment session uh, the way it's supposed to be done. Uh, okay, I'm just going to take you, uh, Madhuri, through the download. Should kids have a bank account too? Um, yeah, absolutely. Why not? I... Uh, personally, I practice, uh, uh, I've got my daughter's bank account open and it's one of those active things about, so um, for kids, you can start with the three simple concepts of uh, saving, spending and giving. So three jars, you can look at that. You can give them three mason jars where they can feed the money or three open. So one of the things which I do with my daughter is I, I, I don't give her pocket money to put in a piggy bank. I like her to see that money. I know it's a little visual, but there is a glass jar where she will put that money and then so that she can physically see it grow. Okay. All of that apparently is also very, very important for us because when a child is looking at it grow and we're now discussing concept of interest, etc. cetera. Um, absolutely. I mean, you kids learn from you. They get our largest money stories come from how we were raised, right? Um, Please send the link. Okay, so let me just show it one more time. I'm going to put the link for the website in the chat box and you all can then just go here. No questions, huh? Thank you, Kushi. I'm so glad to see you here today. Okay, so I'll send the link. Okay, this is on our website, Womanista. You can just go 
when you come to this free resources page you can scroll down we have many other guides as well i would suggest uh, we'll be doing many sessions with you over the next few months so we'll keep telling you which one to download when download this it will open in a google sheet you can download it from there and then edit it okay so the google sheet version will not be editable download it from there and what i showed you today's session is what you will end up see yeah so for all of you the one thing which i want you to take away today is that if budget makes you feel limited restricted controlled uh, stressful anxious try shifting to a mindful spending plan i'm sure that's something that will resonate more with you just the way it did with me um happy to have any questions doubts book a one on one session and we can have a chat uh shilata there is a question from shilata yeah yes yes while you spoke about budgeting for the month or does it make sense to budget for long term also what would be the challenges so um uh typically i i personally i work with an annual kind of a budget like uh, i don't uh think that doing something which is a very long so for long term you can do an investment plan right how will you start building for long term investments but anticipating how exactly i'll be spending after a year might be a difficult thing to do so when i'm looking at a annual plan i'm looking more at the sinking fund concept shilata where i'm trying to say okay this year what are going to be those big spends i'm doing so typically budget is budgeting is something i like to do in the you know i plan it monthly at the most on a quarter and if i want to take a year long view i'll do that otherwise uh, investments is something that i plan to do for the long term and budgeting becomes the first starting point so one of you said we want to talk about investments um, well you can but when you do your budgets is when you actually get your starting point how much can you save how much can you invest so that's the way i use uh, my budgets yes so all your long term so long term anything that you're planning is going to come out of your savings and investment and that amount comes from your budget so you think of long term as investments rather than thinking of them as your budget how much do i so that comes into your saving and investment plan right which we didn't touch today we talked more around how do you allocate the money that's coming in into these three buckets once for example if you link this to investment how it will work is i have a goal of planning for my kids education which means every month i have to save x amount of money where will i find this x amount of money i go to my budget that's how you have to use it right so if i can pull it out in some way comfortable theek hai nahi hai comfortable then go to my budget where can i get this money that's how you got to use this thank you thank you neha i think uh, we are actually past time thank you audience for the wonderful question and neha you have been super engaging as always and i'm sure uh, you know a lot of uh, newer ideas we would have i mean all of us would have got from the session thank you all so much and i request uh, steffi to launch the second poll Yes, ma'am. And while Steffi is launching, I'll just make a quick announcement. So, throughout this year, twenty twenty three, we have planned really interesting topics for uh, uh, you know all of you as part of She Knows Money initiative. And the next session is going to be on the nineteenth Jan six to seven on the topic. Basics of estate planning. So it's going to be a five part series. This is going to be uh done by our, our another partner elo so they are going to come and talk to us uh on uh, the importance of estate planning so do watch out for all our social media handles and you will also be receiving mailers from us uh on our upcoming sessions looking forward to meet all of you next week as well thank you thank you everyone all the best thank and you thank you so much neha bye See you bye bye